65 million years ago, the plains of prehistoric North America were ruled by the infamous Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Tyrant King. Its reign was absolute and helped make a name not only for itself, but also for the family it belonged to, the Tyrannosaurs. However, it wasn't the first member of its family to rule, nor was it the first to rule North America. As just a few million years before it, a close relative was already stirring up trouble, the Gorgosaurus. This was a theropod that was mighty in its own regard, and so terrifying that the paleontologists who unearthed it gave it a name which translates to Dreadful Lizard. Like most Tyrannosaurs, the Gorgosaurus was a monster of a theropod, even if it was smaller than the T-Rex. It measured between 8 and 9 meters, or 26 to 30 feet in length, and weighed around 2 to 3 tons. Its size made it quite large for a Tyrannosaur, and remarkably similar in size to the famous Albertosaurus, the dinosaur that it was also most closely related to. Thankfully for its unfortunate prey, it did take some time for the Gorgosaurus to reach its maximum size, as its bones indicate that it had a slow initial growth as a juvenile that lasted for a few years before eventually experiencing a rapid growth spurt. However, the dinosaurs of North America still had to be on alert, because as a juvenile, it got something in return for being smaller, speed, which allowed it to hunt faster and more nimble prey. This also helped to decrease competition between juveniles and adults, as the younger Gorgosaurus would have their own niches, until they would switch over to larger herbivores after they experienced rapid growth and became a fully grown adult. As an adult, it was robustly built, bearing strong and thick bones, as well as possessing the classic S-shaped neck and small arms of Tyrannosaurs. What set it apart from most other Tyrannosaurs was the crest it bore, which rose from the lacrimal bone in front of each eye, similar to the crest on the Albertosaurus. This this crest may have been brightly colored and used for courtship, as it appears that it would not have been of much benefit for fighting or hunting prey. However, what was of immense benefit for hunting was this mammoth jaws that were equipped with dozens of sharp teeth. There were eight front teeth that were smaller than the rest and closely packed together, and the rest of the teeth were oval in the cross section as opposed to the blade-like shape found in most other theropods. And excluding the eight front teeth, Gorgosaurus may have had between 24 and 30 teeth in both the lower and upper jaw. This number of teeth is very similar to that of the Albertosaurus, yet fewer than those of Tarbosaurus and the Tyrannosaurus. However, one commonality amongst all these Tyrannosaurs was their bite force. The Gorgosaurus is believed to have had one killer chomp, even for a carnivorous theropod, as some studies indicate that it bit with a force of tens of thousands of newtons. It is also thought that at this power, it even beat the Albertosaurus's bite, despite the two being almost mirrors of each other, with the Gorgosaurus being slightly more bulky and robust. The large force Gorgosaurus could apply is thanks to its powerful skull and muscles, which without flesh was over 3.2 feet or 1 meter long and with its kingly bite, the Gorgosaurus could easily crush through the flesh and bone of its prey, which is thought to have mainly consisted of hadrosaurs as well as ceratopsids, though it probably didn't pass up the chance to sink its teeth into any herbivore it could get a hold of. And along with its food, the Gorgosaurus was truly a violent ruler, as it wasn't even afraid to turn its bite on itself. Through the years, there have been a bounty of Gorgosaurus discoveries, resulting in it being one of the better studied dinosaurs. And one thing that has come to light is that it loved to fight, as there have been a few specimens uncovered that sported significant scars to the face, which matched the bite of a carnivorous theropod. Within two specimens bearing marks, it appeared that both survived their violent confrontations, as the lesions showed signs of healing. However, these were still extremely serious brawls, as the damage was not just limited to bites. Both specimens showed signs of experiencing fractures and cuts. Even the holotype of Gorgosaurus, NMC C2120 wasn't spared from the violence, as its skeleton revealed healed fractures to its ribs and fibula, exostosis in its metatarsal, and deformities on its foot and hand, all of which are believed to have been given to it during a single encounter with another carnivore. And unfortunately for the Gorgosaurus, they had little to protect themselves during a fight, as the fossilized skin has revealed that the Gorgosaurus was quite smooth and held fine scales that were smaller than the scales of a hadrosaur. Being 
compared to that of a Gila monster. It is possible that other participants in these fights may have been other theropods that wanted to challenge the terrain. However, the vast majority of paleontologists think the fighters to have all been Gorgosauruses, as during this time, they were by far the most common and extensive theropods, a testament to their success. And their success during the late Cretaceous resulted in the Gorgosaurus having a tight rule over a fair section of North America, as its remains have been found from the Canadian state of Alberta to the American state of Montana, with most fossils coming from the Dinosaur Park formation. These lands were immensely different roughly 76 to 75 million years ago when the Gorgosaurus existed. During these times, Alberta and Montana were coastal plains along the western interior seaway, which divided prehistoric historic North America in two. These plains were subtropical and experienced seasonality, along with occasional droughts which would get very severe. Lush forests peppered the coasts, dominated by conifers, and rivers cut through the land resulting in rich terrestrial and marine life. During the heyday of Gorgosaurus, massive herds of ceratopsids would have roamed the floodplains, as well as equally sized groups of sarlophane and hadrosaurs. Additional dinosaurs in these lands included therizinosaurs, ornithopods, nodosaurids, ankylosaurids, pachycephalosaurus, and small carnivorous dinosaurs such as oviraptorsauria, trudonts, and dromaeosaurs. Non-dinosaurs were also present in the form of mammals, lizards, snakes, and pterosaurs while the waters teemed with sharks, rays, sturgeons, and crocodilians. The Gorgosaurus ruled over these lands and its inhabitants for over a million years. However, it wasn't the only king, as yet another large tyrannosaur also shared these lands, the Despletosaurus. It was very similar in size to the Gorgosaurus, being only a bit bulkier, while the Gorgosaurus had a speed and agility edge. Furthermore, they both had their own preferred quote-unquote kingdoms, as the Gorgosaurus had a higher concentration in the northern lands, while the Despletosaurus preferred the south. However, it does appear that the Gorgosaurus had a slightly better build for those times, as fossil beds indicate it was more populous and far-reaching overall. Yet, thankfully for both Tyrannosaurus, they got along for the most part, as paleontologists believe that they were both apex predators of the time, as neither readily preyed on the other. However, it is technically possible that the wounds found on multiple Gorgosaurus were caused by scraps with Dusplatosaurus, perhaps over territorial disputes or a carcass. It was on these ancient floodplains that Gorgosaurus made its mark on the earth, and unbeknownst to it, it would actually continue to leave a mark millions of years into the future, primarily in regards to individual individual's wallets. And this is because, thanks to the amount of Gorgosaurus specimens, a few near-perfect skeletons have been discovered that have caused quite a bit of stir recently, as they garnered massive asking prices, with one particularly complete fossil raking in $6.1 million, showing the worth of this great tyrannosaur that terrorized prehistoric North America. 